India's Ministry of External Affairs uses measured and underplayed language in its press releases, but its advisory dated April 6 comes as a total surprise to all long-time MEA watchers. In the single-page notice signed by the department in charge of Indian emigrants and consisting of three paragraphs, India has issued one of the sternest warnings seen in a long time. It warns all Indian fishermen to not work on boats that sail between the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain and Saudi Arabia towards Iran. It also warns Indian recruiters to not process job applications of Indian workers applying to fishing vessels supplying from the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain and Saudi Arabia towards Iran. And finally, it tells all immigration officials to not issue the mandatory immigration clearance to workers seeking jobs abroad vessels applying from the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain and Saudi Arabia towards Iran. There are three remarkable things about these so-called advisory. Firstly, it does not speak in general of the dangers to Indian workers in countries at war like Syria on the heels of the murder of 39 Indians in Iraq by the Islamic State. It speaks of a specific territorial water and specific countries. And it does that not once, not twice, but three times in three paragraphs. Second, the word not is in uppercase, bold and underlined also three times. Third, it actually forbids its own officers from granting the mandatory immigration clearance to Indians seeking employment aboard vessels operating in those waters. It is true that several Indian fishermen have been arrested by Iranian authorities in the past and imprisoned for months and yet some of those arrested told an Indian website that they do not expect the Indian government to ban Indians from taking jobs on fishing vessels all together since it is their right indeed. The government of India has never used such vehement language on such arrests in the past. Could there be something else to it this time? The Saudi prince of the United Arab Emirates, Dubai Skyline, Bahrain Skyline and Iran Street scenes and Ayatollah and PM Rouhani, big commercial ships, small fishermen sailing. Prime Minister Narendra Modi meeting Sri Lankan Prime Minister Vikram Singh shaking hands. Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain are allies. Their greatest common enemy is obviously Iran. There are Indian fishermen all over the world. Indians abound on merchant navy vessels that fly under many international flags and often stray illegally into waters too. Small fishermen routinely stray into territorial waters of neighboring countries closer to home between India and Sri Lanka. This happens all the time. Governments hold meetings and then the fishermen are usually released with warnings to not repeat the act. But straying at high seas is almost inevitable for small fishermen with no compasses since international waters cannot be fenced. Have tensions between Saudi Arabia, its allies and Iran risen to a point of no return perhaps? Do India's intelligence and other agencies sense something we don't? In other words, are hostilities going to erupt in that specific part of the world? Vian will keep tracking this story and bringing it to you, but for now, think about it. Take a close look. And joining me, we have our foreign, senior foreign editor, Padma Rao. Padma, thank you very much for joining us on the broadcast. So, a very, very, very clear and tough language and also demanding their own officers not to release visas and working permits. This is pretty much a thorough action. What's behind it? What's your take? Well, uh, Daniel, you know the Middle East, uh, you know, you are the expert there, you are our West Asia Bureau Chief. Uh, you know that, that there has been, uh, you know, the, a lot of things are happening, not only in Syria, but also in Yemen, where the Houthi rebels uh, for long have been accused by Saudi Arabia of fighting a proxy war on behalf of Iran. Now, just recently, just days ago, there was a, an oil tanker which Saudi Arabia uh, accuses the Houthi rebels of, uh, rebels of launching a, a terrorist attack upon. And they say that they had to dispatch a warship to break, off, uh, break up that 
terrorist attack. Uh, so, um, and uh, shortly after that, there was an airstrike by Saudi Arabia on neighboring Yemen in which 12 persons were killed, including many children. So, uh, you know, things are hotting up on the in the region, uh, not only between, and, and we all know already that the actual face-off uh, but, uh, is between Saudi Arabia and Iran. Now, the Saudi uh, uh, coalition, if you like, consists of uh, Bahrain, the United Arab Emirates as well, and they view uh, Iran as, you know, as, as, as the enemy, as also Qatar. Uh, the, the other thing that has happened is, uh, the, you know, the, the, the events in Syria, uh, where also Iran is involved and has been accused repeatedly of fighting uh, a proxy war uh, through the Hezbollah. Uh, so, uh, so there is, uh, you know, so Iran seems to be, uh, things seem to be closing in on Iran. The United States has, uh, has also said that, you know, has, has used some pretty, um, uh, you know, unrepeatable language about President Assad in, in Syria and, and uh, indicated that there will be some action going forward uh, uh, in Syria against the recent chemical attacks. And we saw horrendous pictures of what those attacks did to, uh, to dozens of children in Syria. So uh, that we hear from the United States and what we're hearing from Saudi Arabia today, for instance, is that they plan to, uh, you know, construct a sort of blockade uh, 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 Qatar, uh, which is again a, a friend of Iran, uh, the mutual enemy. So you and the, and of course, at the bottom of all this or behind all this is uh, the, the the alliance between the United States and Saudi Arabia. Uh, many uh, in the U.S. administration have been trying to dissuade President uh, Trump um, and you know trying to persuade him to break off that alliance. But uh, he has just sanctioned billions of dollars of um, arms yet again to Saudi Arabia. He signed a 3.5 billion dollar arms deal when he visited Saudi Arabia. It was the first country he touched uh, down in on his very right, first right. overseas visit. So all that is happening and I don't see, I have never seen the MEA use such strong language uh, even in the 30 years that I covered, uh, you know, civil wars, for instance in Sri Lanka and there are frequent incursions into each other's territorial waters even there, which in fact take place even today. So yes, I do sense uh, that there is something behind this and we at Beyond are going to watch it and, uh, you know, see what happens. It is also worth remembering, Padma, that in Bahrain, the United States have a very important naval base and uh, the MEA of India is obviously referring to the Persian Gulf, which is uh, the only place that those uh, vessels, fishing vessels, could uh, uh, sail towards if they are sailing towards Iran. So you're saying that even during, cover during your coverage of the Sri Lanka war, the MEA never issued such a statement. So we are really talking about something which is exceptional and we need to track. Absolutely. I mean, you know, the, the MEA has always been given to using, uh, you know, very measured language and, uh, and it is rather reticent. It, it doesn't usually, uh, you know, use a word like not in all caps, underlined and in bold uh, type and that too three times in three paragraphs. Uh, and it's also actually telling its own officers in the immigration office to not issue immigration clearances for those workers who, uh, you know, who are seeking jobs on board uh, ships that ply and yet again it mentions that particular area uh, the waters between or who are sailing from the United Arab Emirates Saudi Arabia and Bahrain towards Iran uh, so you know yes it does try and couch uh, the advisory you know by saying that uh, they will be arrested and Iranian uh, you know revolutionary guard uh, will uh, guard their own territorial waters and all that but all that is the usual diplo speak I think the the essential uh, what's between the lines and the, the, the you know just the ferocity of tone in this uh, release is very unusual.